What's going on NFL fans? Welcome back to Touchdown Kingdom, the home of all the latest NFL news and content. We're approaching the beginning of the new NFL league year on March 15th. This means free agency is coming. Players are either going to get re-signed or have to find a new home. This offseason is particularly exciting with the amount of talent that's expected to hit the market. We're going to see a lot of players in new colors next year. Now, if I went through every free agent, this video would be three hours long. So here are the top free agents that are set to hit free agency, where they might end up, and what their contract might look like. This video is powered by BetUS, the official sportsbook sponsor of Touchdown Kingdom. If you have not yet tried them out already, BetUS is offering $50 when you sign up and you don't even have to make a deposit. They are also offering a 125% sign-up bonus up to $2,500 when you sign up. The links are in the description of this video. Sign up for BetUS today. You have nothing to lose. Daniel Jones took that next step this past season under Brian Dable. He had the lowest turnover number of any point in his career and brought the Giants back to the playoffs. It was reported that Jones is looking for a contract that's worth $45 million per year. Now, there's no denying that Jones played really well last year. He had the highest passer rating of his entire career. A $45 million contract puts Jones up there with the most elite quarterbacks in the league. However, I think that a lot of this is contract negotiations and the Giants do end up bringing him back on a lesser deal. The Giants' other big name free agent is Saquon Barkley. While I do think New York brings back Daniel Jones, I'm not so sure about Saquon. If the Giants were to place the franchise tag on Barkley, it would be about $10 million. He's obviously going to be looking for a lot more than that, so I could see the Giants letting him walk rather than going through the headache of a possible sit-out or a trade request. If Saquon hits the open market though, I think a team like the Dolphins or the Panthers might try and sign him. Saquon is up there with the best in the league and will probably receive anywhere from 12 to $14 million on his new contract. Another running back who might find a new home this offseason is Miles Sanders. Sanders has spent his whole career with the Eagles, but the team's cap situation could lead Sanders out of Philly. I could see the Chicago Bears going after a guy like Sanders. A young team that has some cap space could look for a cheaper option and look to spend their money elsewhere. Sanders will probably command around $10 million on the open market, and I could definitely see the Bears giving Justin Fields some more help in the backfield. Alan Lazard is probably the most talented free agent wide receiver available. He's had some real success in Green Bay and could be an asset to the right team. The Tennessee Titans are weak at wide receiver right now with the release of Robert Woods, so why not get a big body receiver to pair with the versatile ability of Traylon Burks? With the way the wide receiver market is rapidly booming, Lazard could get a contract in the $15 million per year range. I think that he's a really good fit for Tennessee, even at that price. Rumor has it that the Cowboys aren't going to bring back tight end Dalton Schultz. In my opinion, they absolutely should bring him back. He was second on the team in targets, catches, and touchdowns, and helped lift this offense when it was most successful. Nonetheless, Schultz is going to have some high demand. The New York Giants should be on line one with Schultz's agent as soon as free agency starts. We saw Dawson Knox have success under Brian Dable in Buffalo, and I could see the Giants coach wanting to get some similar production from a guy like Schultz in that offense. Schultz will get somewhere between 11 to $13 million, a price that the Giants should definitely match. Tight end Mike Gesicki is going to be a sneaky good pickup for whichever team gets him. He isn't the top tight end available, but his ability as a pass catcher will make a true weapon in the right spot. He'll see around 10 to $11 million per year on his new contract. It would be cool to see Gesicki on a team like the Chargers or the Titans, where he can help contribute to an offense that will utilize him well. His blocking has been something that people have criticized, but he's a really talented pass catcher and will make an impact wherever he goes. 
According to multiple sources, safety Jesse Bates will most likely be hitting the open market this spring. The Bengals drafting safety Daxon Hill in the first round last year all but secured Bates' fate. Bates is an incredible safety and will help a team at a position that's limited at the top tier. He could be looking at a contract worth north of $14 million, and he definitely deserves it. He's only 26 years old and playing the best football of his entire career. Bates could be heading to the AFC East, since the Bills could be losing Jordan Poyer, and the Dolphins and Jets both need safety help. All three would be really good fits for the talented safety. I mentioned Bills safety Jordan Poyer walking this offseason, and he's another guy who will be looking at a nice payday from somebody. Poyer has been a stud during his time at Buffalo, and he's going to try and continue his level of play elsewhere. He's a bit on the older side at 31 years old, but he's still playing like a young safety. The Dolphins make sense for Poyer, and he's expressed his interest in playing down in Miami. His age will lead him to making probably a bit less than Jesse Bates will, but he's probably sitting in the $12 million a year range. Those are the top free agents available this offseason with the contracts that they'll demand. Go drop a comment letting me know what you think, and be sure to hit that thumbs up button and subscribe if you're new here. We appreciate all the support, and we'll see you next time.